Hi everybody, it's Allie and welcome to our YNR chat for Sunday, January 17th, 2016. It's been a big, big week on many levels, really. There were some shocking twists, there were some maybe not so shocking twists, but there was certainly a big revelation of the new Billy. I've just gotta jump right into it. Um, wow, I was definitely hesitant to make any snap judgments, and I still am. We've only seen Jason Thompson for, what, a few scenes, but Y&R did dig in. I think they gave us a decent sense of what we're going to be getting from this new actor, and I like it. I do think there's no way to deny, just from even the few brief scenes we've seen with him, that this guy is a good actor. I do still feel a little bit like <sighs> Billy Miller's shoes are still very hard to fill, and I think that Burgess Jenkins did a, a very admirable job. He warmed up in the role. Uh, and I'm assuming that Jason Thompson is going to do the same. No one is going to come in and play the role like Billy Miller or like Burgess Jenkins or even like David Tom. I think we are on the verge of seeing a new type of Billy. And rather than maybe making or forcing the new actor into too much of a pigeonhole, I hope that YNR lets him really discover who he is as an actor and maybe incorporate some new personality traits into the new Billy that we have. I was a little surprised that he's older than I thought he was going to be. I guess from all of the photos I viewed, maybe they were younger from his general hospital days. Uh, but I think that he looks very attractive. I think he's going to make physically kind of a nice match with Victoria. I think he certainly has that Billy Abbott swagger and attitude that we've all come to know and sometimes love and sometimes love to hate. Uh, but I'm really curious to know what your first impressions of the new Billy are, so let them rip. <laughs> I think it will be exciting to hear both sides because I'm sure that there are going to be some vehement fans on both on in both directions. Uh, I, I'm just going to try to struggle to to remember that his name is Jason Thompson. I think I probably, I think on a couple of occasions I might have called him Jason Thomas. <laughs> so, uh, and I did the same thing with, with, with Burgess. I know that I called him Burgess Jennings on a couple of times, but his name's Burgess Jenkins. I, 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 it's, it's terrible. I'm terrible with names. I don't know who gave this woman a video podcast. <laughs> she can't even get the names right. But Jason Thompson, so far, I've given him a thumb up. I think he's going to be good. There's always a part of me that thinks, I wish maybe they just would have cast this guy in a different role, but you know, he's bringing something good to the show, I think, already, and we're gonna, I, I'm going to be open and see what else he can, he can pull in. I will admit that even though this week was extremely intense, extremely emotional, I mean, we're dealing with the death of Billy Abbott. Everyone is at the hospital. Jack has to make this horrible decision about whether or not to honor Billy's wishes, take him off life support, everyone saying goodbyes. And there was a part of me though that had trouble connecting in with this grief because I knew that the recast was coming. I knew that Billy Abbott was not going to die. So it was hard for me to get into it and to torture myself necessarily with all of the tears. I mean, for crying out loud, uh, Jill had the contract that said 
that her son wanted to be pulled off life support in her hands the woman cried on it i don't know if anyone else noticed but tears dripped onto the actual contract itself jack is tortured everyone's tortured ashley's tortured it was it was hard watching all of those bedside scenes and i just thought i don't really need to do this to myself i'm gonna i'm gonna try not to get too deep here <laughs> but i think what was very interesting was the way that YNR introduced the new Billy. I talked last week about, oh Lord, please don't let them do bandages <laughs> or anything that would resemble a hokey soap opera trope. And instead, I was shocked that they actually did go through the process of taking Billy off the life support. And I mean, the minute that the nurse hit the button that took him off of the machinery all of a sudden we get the voiceover the role of billy abbott is now being played by jason thompson and i thought that was kind of neat i mean at that moment where there is zero hope hope and I thought, wow, that is at least giving me something original for a recast. And I I was absolutely thrilled. I can't tell you, I, re I toyed with the idea. I love when they do the voiceover of the role of so-and-so is now being played with so by so-and-so. I, th I thought to myself, wouldn't it be hilarious if I did YNR chat this week and said the role of Allie is now being played by and then re replace it with one of my like stuffed animals or something. <laughs> Uh, but I figured that wouldn't quite play for the podcast, so you get the idea. Maybe someday in the future, I, I maybe I should have saved that joke. <laughs> but I just think it's such it's always kind of a little bit of a treat when we when we see that because sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but it's always um, it's 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 always I don't know interesting. <laughs> so. We have our new Billy. The other thing that was at least a little bit of a nice twist was the fact that we saw and were introduced to our new Billy through this in-between world sort of ghost Billy situation. I mean, uh, it's, it's uh, there's so many. Um, I don't know, so many ghost abbots out there this week. We saw Delia's ghost as well. Uh, I, just, I, I don't know. It's, it, at least it's, it's always on the abbot side. I don't know why that is. But I thought, well, this is kind of a cool way to give us a quick snapshot of how this Billy is going to interact with all of the key characters. He comes out uh, while he's in this in-between ghost state, and he has interactions with all of his siblings. He has a wonderful interaction with Victoria, and I think you can kind of start to see how that chemistry is going to be between those two, and I think that it's going to be good. We also see him pop up in Victor's office, so we get a snapshot of how he's going to interact with the great man himself. We see how he is feeling about the fact that Victor hijacked his deal. I thought that alone was going to be enough to snap him right back to the land of the living. We saw him go and visit Kevin and express how angry he was about the fact that Kevin gave away his deal. And at the very end, we saw him interacting with his children. His daughter said Dada as her first word. We, of course, got to see Delia, and she gave him the wisdom that he needed and the push that he needed, ultimately, to come back to the world and fix it. What did you guys think about seeing little Delia, by the way? She held up her hands and she was wearing a bunch of Catherine's rings. My first reaction was to cry. I was like, oh, Catherine! Any mention of Catherine and I'm practically a puddle on the floor, but I pulled myself back from the brink. I said, Allie, it's just rings. <laughs> Let's not fall apart over this. But it was nice to see the little actress again, and I thought it was a nice introduction. I really liked it. I think YNR did a good job of laying this all out for us, and of course, <laughs> we are in the 
hospital room. Billy is surrounded by absolutely all of his family and just when you think he's about to die, I mean everybody is saying is this it? Is this it? It's, it's happening, isn't it? Everybody's just waiting for him to die and all of a sudden out of nowhere we hear the bleeps and the bloops. It's brain activity. It's a miracle. Last week, I was very critical about the friendship between Billy and Phyllis, and a lot of amazing YNR fans jumped right in and gave me lots of background that Billy and Phyllis have together. For instance, the fact that they worked at Restless Style, which I knew but had completely forgotten about. and. That, it just sort of jogged me into thinking, you know, I am just one fan with one limited and sometimes faulty memory <laughs> who has only been watching for 25 years of a show that's been on since 1973. So I only have the tidbits of information that I have, and I'm trying to cram them into a one hour YNR chat when I, I could probably sit down and remember and dig into so many juicy details if I had, oh, I don't know, a couple days to sit down and chat about YNR. But I thought, you know what? If I can remember certain things that I hold on to, little tidbits about YNR, I wonder what little tidbits about YNR that you guys hold on to. And I thought to myself, I've been wanting to create kind of a YNR trivia quiz for I don't even know how long, but every time I sit down to do it, I think to myself, well, shoot, I don't have firsthand knowledge of what happened in 1973. I might know about it, but I didn't experience it. And then, and I don't want to just give a limited uh, trivia quiz. And, and I thought, you know, wouldn't it be so much more fun if maybe each one of us contributed one of our little tidbits of YNR knowledge from years past, whether it be 40 years ago or whether it be last year, to maybe create this kind of cool YNR trivia quiz. So at yrchat.com, I have put up a little bit of a submission form. If you would like to submit a question and answer to create kind of a communal YNR trivia quiz, I think it would be fun to have little bits of YNR knowledge from from all of the 40 years, you know, to, to, to kind of contribute together and maybe test our YNR IQ. So if you would like to go to the website and give me what you think might be a, a, an attainable, juicy little tidbit about YNR that other people may or may not know about. Maybe you'll trick them. I mean, I'm tricking you guys every single week with, or trying to trick you guys <laughs> every single week with the Who Said It quotes and other games like that. So maybe you might want to see if you've got some YNR knowledge that can trick some other YNR fans. <laughs> so go to the website and submit your Q&A, and I think I'll maybe curate a, a maybe a 10 question trivia quiz that hopefully anybody can get, you know, whether you've been watching for a long time. So don't feel like you have to dig in to the deepest, deepest deep of YNR history. I want people to be able to guess them uh, if they've been watching and maybe I can kind of jog your memories the way you guys jog mine all the time. What in the world were Paul and Dylan thinking, busting up into Billy's recovery room. He's had his eyes fluttering open for all of, what, five minutes? And Paul and Dylan are up in there trying to question him hardcore about who ran him down. This isn't even a mystery that should be on the table. It was obviously an accident, uh, one way or another, and I mean, they were thinking, last I checked, that Abby and Stitch were the ones that might have accidentally done it. So why are you so hot to trot 
to dig in there and find out the, the mystery of this. Don't you have some other crimes to solve? <laughs> I laughed because Gary had mentioned in a voicemail to me that Allie, for once, I was actually glad to see Victoria pointing her venom in the right direction because she ripped into those two guys and let them have it. And I was behind her too. It was incredibly inappropriate, but Dylan got rewarded for it in the end. What do you guys think about the fact that Genoa City is going to have a, a brand new police officer on the force? Dylan has just apparently earned his GCPD police badge. It, it Apparently it comes as just a gift. <laughs> You don't have to go through any formal training. It's just your dad gives it to you and you're a cop. It's it's I it's like so easy to become a cop apparently that you just get somebody to give you the badge and then you just are one. I'll take a badge. <laughs> Give me a badge. Why not? I have as much training as Dylan does. <laughs> oh, man. I, I'm happy about it. I mean, they tried to cover up by saying he's going to have to take some tests, you know, to make sure that he can operate a weapon. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. I hope they don't just make him a cop and then never mention any of that again. I would have rather at least had some hint or implication that Dylan was going to have to go through some sort of formal training before I'm going to be able to believe that he is a member of the Genoa City Police Force. But I'll tell you one thing. I think that Dylan's first discovery as a new cop in Genoa City is going to be that Sharon's son his son-in-law Noah is the one who ran over Billy and covered it up. What do you guys think about Nikki and Neil's affair <laughs> in air quotes? That is this week's poll question at YRChat.com. How you feeling about it? Because I'll tell you, at first, I thought that this is kind of neat. This is kind of a good twist. I like their ruse. I even like that Devon is okay with it because in the end, it helps him potentially get back together with Hillary. I mean, get, also, I sort of enjoy the idea that Nikki and Neil are sneaking upstairs together to steal a few illicit moments with one another. <laughs> There's something funny about that to me. Plus, I like that it makes Victor squirm a little bit, that he, he thinks they're having an affair, and he does. He actually believes that Nikki and Neil are upstairs at the athletic club having sex. <laughs> and he was incensed. Nobody. No, I mean, that scene at the athletic club where he confronted her, he was over the top upset. I mean, whoo, nobody infuriates Victor Newman the way Nikki does. He was ready to pop his top and she just stood there cool as ice. These two people just know how to infuriate each other. And I think Victor's, I would think that Victor's big reaction would make Nikki at least want him more, or maybe that would be flattering to her or something. But the fact that Nikki says, you know what, actually, let's let Victor think it. Let's let my husband think that I'm having an affair. <laughs> That's where the wheels started coming off for me. I thought it was it was funny if it was just maybe to make Hillary think it, but I will admit as Nikki is making her case to Neil as to why they should go forward and let Victor think this, I, I actually went back and watched that conversation twice because the mentality of life is short. <laughs> Let me toy with my husband so that he will love me more or want me more or decide to spend more time with our family confuses me a little bit. So what do I think about Nikki and Neil's affair? I mean, I think it's, I think it's a little bit fun for now, but 
two can play at this game. I mean, it's going to backfire on Nikki, whether she realizes it at this point or not, because Victor is, is, is pretty, it would be pretty easy for him to do around and do the exact same thing. I mean, huh, where's Judge Moxley? Sometimes what is intended to bring two people together really just ends up ripping them further apart. I think Nikki and Victor are going to be a case in point of that, and uh, Devon and Hillary are becoming a case in point of that. Hillary doesn't love Devon no matter how hard he tries, no matter even if he just wants to steal a, a date with her at a, at, a, at a dive bar or a dive restaurant, she does not want to give him even the tiniest crumb of attention and it has to absolutely kill him inside. Hillary wants Neil. And even though Nikki and Neil are flaunting this so-called relationship in front of her on purpose, which I, I will say again was entertaining, Nikki letting Hillary see the text message that came through on her phone, Hillary's not buying it. Please. Uh, she knows that Neil wants her. A woman knows. <laughs> Nikki is no match for Hillary and Hillary's mine. Hillary has the power of youth and sex appeal. <laughs> Neil wants her and she, he can have her. I mean, wow. They end up having crazy hot lab sex this week. I thought it was gonna be a dream sequence. I was shocked that it actually happened. They met up in, I think it's Ashley's office, and there was this scene, it was Neil and Hillary in that zipper dress where he's, 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 he's unzipping her. <laughs> I thought, this cannot be happening. Absolutely not. Neil's been going out of his way to try to reunite her and Devon, and he's just going to give in now? But no, it was real. Hillary and Neil did it, and of course, Devon sees the whole thing. I was shocked. Absolutely shocked. And I felt so bad for Devon in that moment. I think now that Hillary and Neil have slept together again. I'm back on board for Hillary and Devon. Oh, I'm the worst. <laughs> I just float back and forth between who I want to see her with. But his poor face as he's watching them shocked. I mean, he should have just busted in on, I mean, who has sex in a room with glass doors? You didn't think anybody was going to see you. That place has glass doors. Oh, he, instead of busting in on them, he just runs back to the athletic club and he tells Kane and Lily and Hillary says, no, he, dad doesn't love Hillary. And, and Devon goes, well, dad's loving Hillary a lot right now. Okay. <laughs> that was a great line. And Neil comes bumbling into the middle of it and there's a huge blow up at the athletic club. Neil had no idea that Devon would ever have seen that in a million years, but Devon was awesome. The actor killed it in that scene. Um, Brighton James, I will give him props for that. I really thought he played it well. It was absolutely over the top, infuriated. He, he wanted to kill Neil in that moment. And I just can't say that I, that I blame him. I mean, the one, you know, I will give also Devon credit for the fact that he didn't tell Lily about Neil's involvement in Hillary's uh, kidnapping and all of that. That's something, a stat is a secret that Devon has chosen to keep for Neil, and he really doesn't have to. And I don't know if maybe somewhere in the next couple of weeks, this the, the fact that Neil slept with Hillary is gonna become a catalyst for that, but um, if Lily finds out that her dad was, not, not only did that he slept with Hillary, but that he was involved in that kidnapping that ended up breaking up her marriage because Kane was accused, 
it's gonna cause major, major problems. And I'm thinking that's how it's gonna go down. I, I really, I think seeing Lily feel betrayed by Neil is gonna create some juicy little tidbits. I, 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 of, I of course loved the juicy tidbits that were created by Lily and Hillary. I mean, Lily got up on Hillary and confronted her and she told it like, she didn't care if Hillary was dead. She said, when you were missing, I was so concerned about you. And frankly, at this point now, I wish you were still lying at the bottom of that cliff. Oh, well, meow. Talk about rivalries and girl smacks. I think that seeing Hillary and Lily going at it hardcore was going to be something that, uh, that would be fun for the future. By the way, so many people commented to me this week about Lily's black dress. Oh my goodness. I can't even believe how many people noticed it too. Of course, she's uh, as soon as she showed up in that black dress with that nude illusion, I was like, why is this happening? I don't know what it is about that nude paneling that it's everywhere now. Everybody wants to wear it. Although, I don't know if maybe it just doesn't look good on screen because I can't say I've ever seen a new, anybody wearing a nude illusion in person. I'm, um, contrary to popular belief, not attending fabulous galas on a weekly basis where people wear uh, formal wear. But I, 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 there's just something about it when she walked on screen and when I've seen it on other people, it's like, blah, it's everywhere. I don't know, Wyanor needs to stop doing it. It does not look good. And the Wyanor chatters this week agreed. Victor Newman is pretty much the worst person in the world at this point. I can't deny it. I know I make a lot of excuses for Victor, but what was he even doing in Billy's hospital area as they were making the decision to take him off life support. I was repulsed by the fact that Victor was there offering up this fake sympathy for Jack saying, hey, well, you had to do what you had to do. I understand. Go ahead and make your decision, Jack. Was it me or I just felt like Victor was rooting a little too hard for taking Billy off of the machines? Like, he was being too supportive. Uh, I mean, did you guys take it that way? Was he being, was he just trying to be a good guy or was he secretly glad to get Billy out of the way? He addressed it later in the week uh, to Noah. You know, like, I look, I, I did, I, the guy, I've never liked the guy, but I didn't want him to die. But maybe it's just that he needed to insert himself up into every situation. But he was also doing business in the hospital. He's so disrespectful. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's not that he wanted him to die, but just the fact that Victor was there doing business and stole Billy's idea out from under him. I mean, th that he had to worm his way into the tech deal with Kevin was just, it was disrespectful to Billy. It was disrespectful to Victoria, although I loved loved the scene of Victor whining and dining Kevin Fisher. Oh, that was so good. Encouraging Kevin to imagine a world where he's a rich, rich man, where he's as rich as Victor. And so naturally, Kevin imagines himself inside of Victor's office. Like, Kevin Fisher's wildest dream was having Victor Newman's office in a foosball table in it. Um... <laughs> It was so weird. He and Mariah are there dressed up looking all nice and they have this moment where you think they're going to maybe kiss and come together and that's his big fantasy. But nope, it's foosball. <laughs> Who is this guy? What guy does that? Really? You'd rather have foosball than Mariah? Did I say Marissa? I hope not. I always struggle to not to not interchange those. They're just too close uh, in in the in in, uh, in sound for me. But also, uh, the other part I loved was his portrait on the wall. I loved Michael coming in, and he's all a paper pusher, and he's all all these papers. And then we see Kevin's got his own portrait on the wall behind him where Victor's was. Oh, that was so much 
fun. I just think that the writing for Kevin and for Victor has been great right now. I'm, I, all of the dialogue, especially between Kevin and Mariah, has been entertaining. And even though I have a hard time accepting Victor as the, the villain, he did have a lot of choice lines so i think they're i think they're ramping it up i think weiner's doing a good job in that way of giving us something a little bit kitschy but i will say michael's advice was the advice to take kevin is trying to decide whether he is going to move forward with victor and old money bags or if he's going to remain loyal to billy and or jack and michael tells him look you get involved with victor no matter how wonderful your foosball fantasy might be victor will take all and you will get scraps and that's exactly what uh, would potentially happen. The twist this week is that our Swiss Miss Natalie has arrived and surprise, by the way, she's beautiful. She's hiding it behind a loose ponytail updo and glasses, but she's of course beautiful underneath all of that. <laughs> um, and she reveals that she is in danger because she has uh, taken on or promised other investors could be involved in the time in the time frame where Kevin was having trouble making his decision and securing the investor on his end she took on investors on her end agreed to it took their money and is now trying to get out of the deal and she's on the run this girl is definitely definitely shady and Mariah is the one that sees it I don't know how intense this part of the story is going to get. I don't know if it's going to be like super intrigue or if it's here just to kind of entertain us. But for now, I kind of like it on just an entertainment level because I think there's a really fun rivalry brewing here between Mariah and Natalie. Sharbutt on YouTube says, Hey, Allie, I think you may have missed a key convo with this whole Adam Victor Luca thing. Adam and Victor had a convo in Victor's office at the end of Friday's show in which it was revealed that Adam is working as a double agent. They're basically playing Luca. So, um, yes, I did catch that conversation and I was thrown off by that. That made me more confused la you know when i was watching last week's show than anything else because unless it was just me i thought that adam was genuine in his alliance with luca i totally played into it i don't know if that part was my misunderstanding or not but i certainly did catch the twist that victor uh was asking adam to do that but i feel like adam is not necessarily on victor's side i don't feel like adam is on either side i think the, i mean first of all the man throws me for a loop and i do feel confused by his allegiance on the surface, I, he's definitely Victor's henchman. That seems to be where you know what what the what the story is telling us. But I don't trust that Adam's on Victor's side. I was seeing indicators that he actually was trying to align with Luca to dethrone Victor. And the fact that Victor is blackmailing Adam into doing all of these things at the company makes me think that Vic, that Adam wants out of this deal and he needs to make as many. Uh, alliances as possible in order to make that happen but kind of backing up and thinking about it Adam doesn't and hasn't really ever needed Luca in order to accomplish that so I still feel like it's a bit of a gray area surprise surprise when it comes to Adam <laughs> I, I feel like I never fully understand where his head is, uh, and, and he's made some sort of questionable decisions lately, but we learned this week as that twist sort of took place and Adam began having conversations with Victor, Victor had promised to provide Luca with Marco's location since Luca's looking for him in order to take down his family, which also, by the way, would be something that would um, help Newman Enterprises. And I think that would be Victor's goal in, in facilitating this. So Victor gives 
Adam the information that he was looking for. Adam passes it along to Luca and they learn from the the warden, I suppose, at the jail that Marco is dead. And so Luca feels like, oh no, my plan is completely out the window. I couldn't quite put my finger on exactly how Adam felt about it, but now Victor wants Adam to go to Spain to find out more information about the Centauri's and see if they can bring them down another way. I there's I just I I I could entirely be me. Is Marco really dead though? I mean, the way that Victor passed along that information and and I, I just didn't seem like like it was real. I felt like we were trying to be fooled a little bit there. Somehow hearing that Marco was dead, I just didn't believe it. Do you believe that Marco is really dead? Uh, and then we have this revelation at the as, as Adam's on the way to Spain where he's outside of his apartment door and someone comes him up behind him and like whacks him over the head. And then the last thing we see of Adam, he's in the down elevator with his hands up and a bag over his head. A, that was hard. Horrible. I didn't want to see that. First of all, that's too much for me. I don't need to see that. That That's, I don't know. That image was shocking to me for some reason. That's what you see on the news with people being taken hostage. It was just a little too much for me. But apparently he's been kidnapped. Chelsea hasn't heard from him. And the question is, who did it? So it could certainly be Marco if Marco is still alive. It could certainly be Luca. Uh, Luca was talking about needing some kind of alternate plan, uh, but it was revealed at the very last moment of Friday's show that somebody emailed Victor. So, and, and I, I kind of think that it's Luca's dad. I think it's the Centauri's. I think that uh, I mean, the, the email didn't exactly say who it was. All the email said was, uh, you give us the girl and we'll give you your son. So is the girl Marissa? I assume so, unless it has something to do with Marissa's daughter. I know I'm not the only one that's fuzzy on this because there's, there's multiple people who could have a reason to want to uh, get to Adam and vis-a-vis -vis Victor. Um, but Chelsea is the only one I think that's gonna be able to really locate him, you know, through the power of love. <laughs> She knows her husband's missing. She is on a mission to find Adam, and uh, she's trying to pro probe Marissa a little bit for details. And and uh, and Marissa revealed this week that she has a journal. So even if Mark goes dead, she's got a journal who the and that will be able to help them maybe find some other connections to the Santoris. I assume that that's going to be uh, uh, integral to the story. So maybe. Whoever kidnapped Adam is completely a third party, but then there's a, there's also this part of me that thinks, well, is there any way that whoever kidnapped Adam is somehow connected to the Swiss hacker chick? Like these other investors, if they're that dangerous, could they be the ones that kidnapped Adam? Yeah, I guess the key to finding that out would be to figure who's the girl, because the girl could be Marissa if it's the Santoris, and the girl could be the Natalie if it's the other investors. So I, I, it, it is a little fuzzy, right? Maybe Weiner doesn't know how they're gonna work it out yet. And I don't know, I'm just like spitballing here while I'm doing Weiner chat. I got probably, if I, I need to maybe, like, I feel like this is the thinker. I feel like I should sit down and really, really figure out the connections, but my brain is just like, <laughs> love. Actually, my brain was more entertained <laughs> by the fact that Victor Newman's email address is vnewman at newman enterprises.com <laughs> did you go did anybody else notice that uh, I grabbed a screenshot of it and I'm tossing that up at yrchat.com if I guess I just never thought about what Victor's email address would be and I feel extremely entertained by the fact that that's it I mean he's the Victor shouldn't it be like the Victor Newman at newmanenterprises.com 
I mean, he certainly doesn't use a free mail. It's not like the Victor Newman at Hotmail.com or something like that. But and that's just his business email. Like, what would Victor Newman's personal email address be? Would it be the mustache at gmail.com or you know what would that be? I I have to put that at yrchat.com. That screenshot, and I would love this week if you guys could. For, since I'm all confused about everything going on with Adam and Luca and Victor, it would at least give me some some alleviate some of my uh, confusion. If you guys would maybe give me your fake email addresses or your best email addresses for Victor Newman, like what would Victor Newman's personal email <laughs> address be if he has to pick a handle you know <laughs> what would it be so if you uh want to leave me your best email addresses for victor uh, i'll read out some of the good ones next week and give you a shout out for your creativity life is messy ain't that the truth jill said it last week amanda katie colleen um, victoria austin and naomi and elizabeth all got that right i just thought it was a very true quote and here is this week's who said it quote billy colored outside the lines with permanent marker kind of a good summary of who Billy Abbott really is. Billy colored outside the lines with permanent marker. I thought it was a very good observation and if you think you know who observed it, you can go to the website and leave your guess and if you get it right, I will read your name on next week's YNR Chat. Last week's website poll question was, have you ever stopped watching YNR when a story hits too close to home? And after I posted this poll, I thought to myself, maybe that's not a good question. Maybe that was just me and nobody's ever had to do that. And I was very surprised to see 63%. The majority of people said, yes, I have stopped watching YNR uh, when a story hits too close to home. And there are some really good comments up here on the website from Katie and Austin and Lisa sharing their stories about the particular you know moments in time where it's like this is too much given what is going on in my life right now uh, Justin had called in and left me a voicemail saying right now he's going through something and you know that's a, that's a medical uh, issue with someone that's very close to him and seeing Billy in the hospital and all of the goodbyes was just very emotional and oh my gosh Eric left me a voicemail this week say, you know, saying that he had to put his dog Arthur to sleep oh my gosh I just I just tugged on my heart Eric I I like teared up because I you know I had shared with you guys that I lost uh, my rabbit a couple years ago and it is when you have a pet and you're going through that it's just so so hard so I just wanted to say Eric oh I'm thinking of you and Arthur and um, it makes me think of buns it's like you know y and R is life and we are seeing this you know sort of um, dramatic reflection of life coming back at us from our screens and we are projecting back all of our feelings and what's going on in our lives right back at it so I mean again YNR is life and uh, and life is is YNR in a, in a lot of ways so um, Justin had also left me a in his voicemail saying that he does not like the Nikki and Neil affair um, they're two adults and this is a storyline that would work with the younger characters but not with the older cast members I really liked that comment from Justin because I even though at first in, in, in the in the week I was entertained by their their fake affair I did think to myself as the week progressed this is not very mature this is not necessarily what adults would or should be doing but I don't know I've also seen a lot of positive comments about that storyline so be sure to go vote and let me know and leave some comments to let me know how you're 
feeling about Nikki and Neil. Vinyl Collectors on YouTube says, I don't understand why Neil is using Nikki, a woman who's married to Victor Newman, to make Hillary jealous. If he really wanted to do that, he should have just played into Gwen's feelings for him. It would have made, been much more believable and Gwen would have been more aggressive about getting in Hillary's face and telling her to stay away from Neil. That is so true also. The Nikki Neal affair isn't, or in, in quotes, affair, isn't necessarily uh, believable. And I think not only is it going to backfire on Nikki and, a, you know, Victor by proxy, but I'm wondering if Nikki and Neil are actually going to find themselves in a relationship out of all of this. Daisy on Facebook had thrown out to me some theories about who kidnapped Adam and I'm, I was really happy because I thought, well, okay, that helps me get that not it's not a cut and dry thing. I because I always worry that I did I miss something, you know, because because I'm 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 again one person and then all of you guys are watching and 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 sharing the things that you pick up on and I, and I thought. I hope that it's not really obvious who did this and I just don't get it. But Daisy also confirmed that she thinks that it looks like the investors that Natalie stole from are the ones who kidnapped Adam. That seems most reasonable because her computer was hacked, so they likely found some information about Victor's investment. They likely don't know Victor Newman, so they don't see kidnapping Adam as a risk, but it's a good idea to get the program from Natalie. Victor will never allow them to get away with this though. Goodbye people we've never seen before. Victor is coming for you. <laughs> I think that that is possibly the correct. I, I almost am wondering if the Santoris are, and the whole thing with Marco is a total red herring. YNR has very much been known to do that, even recently. So maybe the fact that the hacker girl's coming into the story right now as Adam has been kidnapped is, is the correct one. Um, Eric had also left me a voicemail last week that I didn't catch before I got to YNR chat and he was comparing Marissa as the modern day Sharon and I thought that was such an interesting comparison because Marissa is so clearly trapped between Luca and Noah and it does ring true with this Sharon Adam Nick triangle that we saw several years back and Eric had mentioned that it's like Adam is Luca and Nick is Noah and of course this time Victor's the one coming in between them to break it all up instead of the way Nikki did uh, with, with Sharon. So I thought that was kind of an interesting twist and another reason why it's so cool to be able to connect current storylines with past storylines and I think stuff like that would make good trivia fodder. <laughs> we should use up our y and our knowledge and and, uh, and put it to put it to the test. Put ourselves to the test. Aaron on YouTube says Marissa is so two faced. What does she want? She had an affair with Noah for months while lying to her husband, and then she runs back to Luca and starts playing him. She clearly has divided feelings for Luca and Noah. I was watching Marissa lying in bed with Luca this week and it really sunk into me that she is straight up sleeping with Luca while trying to do this defense of Noah thing and still in some ways leading Noah on. If she didn't want to be with Noah, she should have told him so and if she wants to be with Noah then she needs to leave Luca. She's no doubt stringing them both along and it doesn't really make her look good. Uh, Samuel on YouTube says, I actually like the storyline with Noah running over Billy. Of course Noah didn't know that he ran over Billy and it was a total and complete accident. What I think the writers are trying to do is, is, what I think the writers are trying to build is Victoria finally opening her eyes about her father. I hadn't thought of that, Samuel, because I was, I, I just, I, I 
couldn't figure out why we were going down this road again, but it makes complete sense. When Victoria finds out that Victor was the one who encouraged Noah to cover up the truth, she's going to see her father in a totally different light. And maybe that's why Jill was taking the time to describe Victoria as a daddy's girl. I think that daddy's girl facade might very well be breaking down in 2016. Maybe that's something that we're going to see out over the course of this year. I also got a good message from Dion at YRChat.com who was, we talked a little bit last week about Noah and I had mentioned that he maybe was, that this actor maybe wasn't entirely fitting for the part and I did go back and think of that and I, I, I suppose that's not necessarily true because Dion um, says that she she disagrees that because she likes no this Robert Adamson in the role of Noah. I think Dion says, I think Noah has been purposely written as somewhat sheltered and therefore an immature young adult and as such Robert Adamson fits the part to a T. I do like the actor too and I didn't mean to come off as if I didn't like him and we had some scenes this week at the bar where Noah is getting drunk. He's completely thrown off by the fact that not only did this accident turn into someone's death, but now he's been pulled into this whole cover-up that he didn't necessarily need to be pulled into. It's rocking his world. He's drinking way too much. And by the way, Adam had mentioned at YRChat.com that he is worried YNR is going to go in a Noah drinking too much direction, which I would not like to see. But uh, back to Dion's point, there were lots of close-up shots of Noah and I felt like we were really zooming in on his face a lot and seeing his torture and there was of course that scene between Adam and Noah where YNR acknowledged these two people have been in a similar situation and Noah was asking Adam how he dealt with it. It was it was great and I did appreciate Robert Adamson and uh, the character of Noah quite a bit this week so I wanted to make sure to give him props. Uh, Jojo on YouTube says, yes, 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 they did it. The writers played it right. I love how they introduced us to the new Billy. It wasn't the predictable way we would usually expect, such as a character being beat up so bad that we don't recognize him or needing plastic surgery or losing his memory and not remembering his past. What a spectacular introduction to the acting chops of Jason Thompson. Also, I imagine that Adam's abduction coincides with his temporary absence while he's off to play the lead in Maverick. Well, first of all, Jojo, I agree that YNR did something special with that recast. They could have gone traditional, they could have gone predictable, and they didn't. I like the way they did it. I also didn't know that Justin Hartley is off doing uh, another role. I'm not sure what Maverick is actually. If anybody wants to leave me some comments and tell me all about what, what this project is of his, I'd love to learn more about it. But it kind of makes sense now. And I suppose that means that we're going to be seeing Adam off of the landscape for a while. Uh, Beatrice called and left me a voicemail and she says, I didn't think that I could get into Jason Thompson, but aside from the character, I think it looks like he's going to be all right. <laughs> so we're seeing some people maybe turn around who were skeptical about Jason Thompson. So that's a good sign for that actor that he's turning turning opinions around already. Um, I think that just from talking to, to various YNR chatters, I do feel a little more open to having other soap act actors on the landscape because it's, you know, as Dion mentioned last week, or we talked about last week, AMC is no longer around and I don't even, is Guiding Light still around? I don't think so. <laughs> I, I don't watch other soaps except for Bold and the Beautiful. <laughs> I only watch two, okay? And I have not, I don't have awareness of so many of the other, uh, the other shows. So um, it's kind of a nice way, I think, to give nod to some of the other actors and characters uh, that that people have enjoyed over the years. I mean, the legacy of soap operas is just so incredible, and I like that YNR is maybe honoring that at least by bringing in 
uh, some some familiar faces. Uh, Gary left me a voicemail, and even though Gary made a lot of points this week, for some reason this one stuck with me. He says, Allie, you mentioned last week that you wouldn't want to be married to Billy. Well, I wouldn't want to be married to Victoria. <laughs> I don't know why, but I woke up that this morning thinking about that comment from Gary because I thought, you know, yeah, I really wouldn't want to be married to Victoria either. They are such an odd couple because he is such a screw up and she is such an ice queen to compensate maybe in the opposite direction. Uh, so that, I don't know why I started thinking about that, but who would really want to be married to Victoria? I mean, it's true. Even in uh, even in the moments where he was down and out, she's, she was needling him a little bit. Although, I will say I did appreciate the little bedside scene where she was telling the story about the frog and the princess or whatever it was. It was it was cute. And I think that we're going to see some chemistry between those two actors too, which should be fun. Anna called into my voicemail sounding much more chipper and she said she mentioned something I noticed right away. New Billy looks more like Jill's son. I thought that too, right off the bat. Seeing those two in a scene side by side, I thought, okay, okay, I'm getting where the look is coming from now. Um, and then Anna goes on to say, I wish that Billy would have woken up as Billy Miller. <laughs> I think a lot of people probably feel like that. It's so tough because even as they were, as, as the, the, the actor was saying the lines about Victoria uh, making fun of his boxer shorts. There is something that that hit with me where it's like that was Billy Miller. That was kind of Billy Miller's thing. And it goes back to what I was talking about at the very beginning of YNR chat, which is, hey, you know, I mean, nobody's ever really going to be able to be Billy Miller. So I hope YNR gives us keeps the core uh, parts of the character, but maybe gives us some new facets to him that we can bite into. Um, oh, Anna also said, I, I get the feeling that Marco kidnapped Adam because the warden said he's dead. I think he escaped, and I hope not. I hope Marco does not come back. Um, I, I honestly, I really, uh, there is a part of me that anytime YNR says somebody's dead, I just can't believe that they're dead. So I can't help but wonder, is Marco still alive? This past week, I received a fun, fun, fun voicemail from Nancy and Melissa, and it completely made my day. It's made my week. And what's so special about this particular voicemail is the fact that Nancy and Melissa are mother-daughter YNR fans, and they were calling to tell me that they're there with the next generation of YNR watcher. Little Lucy is only, I think she said four weeks old. <laughs> so Nancy and Melissa are gonna be training Lucy to be the next YNR fan from birth. <laughs> and which is, it's also cool that Nancy's mom also watched the show. So we're looking at potentially four generations of YNR watchers. That is so cool. I would love to have been watching the show with my mother or sharing it with my daughter. I just, I'm almost so envious because it would be so wonderful to be able to connect with, uh, with, with your family on that level. So I just wanted to say thank you for the amazing voicemail. I had so much fun. I think, uh, Nancy had said she, she had, uh, gotten the Jack soap and she, I, I laughed so hard. She said that she, she took a shower with, with Jack. <laughs> That's sort of the whole reason I wanted to do the soap for soap fans thing, because I just think it's 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 um, a fun pun. Uh, if you're not aware of the soap for soap fans, I created, uh, or if you're a new YNR chatter, I created YNR soap bars that represent the characters on YNR. And even though soaps and soap is a fun pun, I also really like the idea of just lathering up with Victor or you know, taking. A shower with Jack. That's hilarious to me. And I also am going to take this opportunity to announce that we will be having the next Soap for Soap fans giveaway. So I noticed that Valentine's Day is falling on a Sunday this year, so February 14th. And I thought, well, I had already planned on making soap 
two new soap couples. So I did it. <laughs> I made two new soap couples, which is a total of four soaps, and I'm going to do a Valentine's Day giveaway. So they're already finished, and I thought, well, rather than just tell you who they are, what if I let you guys guess who they are? Wouldn't that kind of be fun? Because each soap that I created is based on a character. It's inspired by a character in both color and fragrance. So if you think you want to guess and you think you might know who these soaps right here are, if you're watching the podcast, you won't be able to see, I almost dropped it, but uh, these are the two new Genoa City Soaps, and if you think you know who the character is that inspired these, you can go to GenoaCitySoap.com and I will have pictures of both of the soaps as well as the fragrance descriptions. I think that's kind of uh, a key to it because I really thought about these characters and what I believed their colors would be, what I believe their fragrances would be, and I think that you would probably, I want to see if you guys can guess them because that also tells me whether or not I'm on target with it all. So GenoaCitySoap.com is where you can see the picture, read the fragrance description, leave your guess, and if you get these two right, I will say these are, they are a couple. These two soaps, these two people are together. And if you think you know who it is, and if you get them both right, I will give you a shout out on next week's YNR chat. And then also next week, I will announce who the soaps are, and I will show you the next two, which I think you're really, really gonna like. I think you're gonna appreciate who I chose, and I think it's cool that it's gonna be a Valentine's Day thing. So at the end of all of this, and in fact on February, February 14th, one of you guys is going to win. So that's something to be excited about too. So just a heads up, because I know sometimes people will blip in and out and, you know, rather than making it a really long giveaway, I think I'll just give you guys a heads up that the entries for the next Soap for Soap Fans giveaway will be February 7th through the 12th. And then I'm going to announce the winner on uh, Sunday, Valentine's Day, uh, February 14th. So mark your calendar. <laughs> so just in case you miss a Y in our chat, you don't have to miss out on the giveaway. And actually, while you're at the website, um, if you want to sign up for the newsletter, I'm sure that I will send out a reminder to the newsletter folks so that everybody definitely uh, gets in on the giveaway if you are interested in receiving a bar of Allie's handmade YNR inspired cold process soap. Oh man, this has been a big week. <laughs> I've got so much fun YNR creativity going on right now and I'm really excited about that trivia quiz. So if you have a question that pops into your mind right off the bat, I hope that you send it to me. And maybe as you're watching the show and things are coming up and you're remembering little bits of YNR history, go to the website and make do a submission for that question because I just think that it's going to be really fun and it's something we could rotate in and out too. So I could be like, hey, here's this month month's trivia quiz, go there and, and see how well you know YNR. I just think it's kind of a fun way to challenge ourselves. Um, and of course, I love hearing from you guys, so I hope that you give me all of your comments and your feedback, and I love it when you tell me about the YNR history that you remember that has somehow just flown right out of my brain. So uh, you can leave your comments on the site. You can, uh, from the site, find YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and iTunes as well. Um, I do love the podcast listeners too. Um, and I appreciate you guys giving me your feedback, uh, especially via voicemail. I love listening to voicemails. It's kind of a different kind of way for me to hear hear somebody talking about YNR. You hear me every week, but I don't get to hear you. So three. 309-588-4569 is the telephone number if you want to call and leave a voicemail. So 
yeah, I think that's it. I think it's been a big week and next week is probably going to be even bigger. So come on back and we'll chat about the show then. I love you guys. I'll see you then. Bye.